Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on how civil engineers are redefining city streets to improve accessibility and create healthier, more resilient communities. My guest today is Jeremy Charzan, the Multimodal Design Practice Lead for Tool Design in Silver Spring, Maryland. Welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Jeremy, by 2050, the world's population is expected to reach 9.8 billion people. Nearly 70% of this booming population, 6.7 billion people, is projected to live in urban areas. What does this mean for a transportation engineer like you? Well, it means I have my work get cut out for me, doesn't it? Um, I mean, we're building buildings taller and taller to accommodate more density and allow more people to live in urban environments, but we're not able to widen the streets. We're not knocking these buildings down to make the streets wider, nor would we want to. Uh, wider streets mean faster moving cars and a less safe environment for everybody to move around. So it means with the space we have, we need to create a more dynamic accommodating system that allows people to walk and bike, take transit, drive their personal automobiles, and also accommodate, you know, deliveries and freight movement and the things that allow our economy to grow. How will the streets in the cities of the future need to be designed to handle alternative types of transportation, such as bikes, electric scooters, and walking? And I say the future, I, I, here in D.C., you see that right now. Yeah, I mean, the future is now. Um, and, and I like to think of it less as alternative transportation. It's just part of the transportation system. And for those particular uses, I like to think of it as active transportation. And this is sort of part of the language reform that transportation engineers need to use when talking about our types of projects so that we're not adding bias to the language. So when you say alternative transportation, that implies that driving a car is the only way to get around. Um, but in terms of how do we accommodate all these things, um, you see a lot of cities working to do things like protected bike lanes and um, wider sidewalks and the things that we need to allow people to be comfortable moving around in a, in a city where you have lots of moving people and um, all these people moving at very different speeds for different purposes. Um, so protected bike lanes is something uh, that does a better job of accommodating people trying to bike that might not necessarily be comfortable or confident riding with moving traffic. Um, and so we see a lot of cities trying to roll out networks of these protected bike lanes as they've done throughout Europe and other places so that you can get from point A to point B without having to mix with a lot of traffic. Um, sort of designing for all ages and abilities or people mm -hmm. ages 8 to 80 is what we often say. Your company Tool Design helped Boston create its complete street design guidelines. Can you tell us how Boston and other cities are reimagining their streets? Yeah, this is, Boston was certainly one of the early adopters of a complete streets policy, but we see cities and states, DOTs, uh, sort of taking this idea to heart that you should be able to take transit, walk, or bike in the same safe and convenient manner as driving a car. So sort of raising the, the profile of these other means of getting around. And you know, it's easy to think that everybody drives, but you, know, you look at some cities, New York has less than half the people have access to or own a vehicle. Right. Lots of cities, it's one in three people, whether it's for economic reasons or just you don't need a vehicle. You live and work in the same place. You don't necessarily need to you know, own your own personal vehicle. So, Complete streets policies um, really change the way that engineers look at street design so that all these things are built into that design process. How are we going to accommodate people walking and biking? What accommodations are we providing for people taking transit so that while they're waiting for the bus, they have a shelter. You look at a lot of bus stops today and it's just a stick, it's a sign, right? And a, a concrete pad sitting on the side of the road. Mm -hmm doesn't really imply that they have the same level of travel as somebody who's in their personal vehicle. So that's what these complete streets policies or design guide updates that all these agencies are undertaking. This is the issue that they're trying to address to really equalize the playing field. Jeremy, do you believe that we should design roads to discourage people from using their cars? I mean, it's a tricky question. A, a car does provide a sense of freedom. I mean, I personally 
own a car and I use it for things like going camping with my dog or um, you know getting to places that there isn't good transit access to but by and large I'm able to get around because I live and work in a city without having to, to drive my vehicle. So in urban environments, I would say, yeah, for regular trips that you take daily, you shouldn't have to, to drive a car to do that. And as we talked about before, you know, there's only so much space in the street, we can't continue to widen that out. So we, we need to provide accommodations for people to be able to use another form of transit to get to their their job or grocery shopping, those sorts of things. Outside of environmentalism, some have argued that expanded bike lanes and pedestrian zones promote civic and social engagement. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. I, I experience it every day. I, I bike to work and on the days that I don't, I walk to the bus stop and I see my neighbors, I get to say hello. I talk to the crossing guard every morning that helps me cross a busy street, whether I'm going to the bus or on my bike. Um, and it really just allows you to engage with the people around you. You're moving a little bit slower, you're not in an enclosed space like you are with a car, and so you just have natural opportunities for interactions with people you know. It also means that moving at those slower speeds, you tend to see more things that you don't see when you're, when you're in your vehicle. So you see the new restaurant that's opening or the announcement about some sort of change in a, a building, you see the, the notice posted in the windows that this is undergoing renovation. You know, it really opens your eyes to the world around you because you're actually out and about in it and moving at a pace where you sort of pick up on these things. Jeremy, thanks for joining me today for this informative discussion about reimagining our roads. Yeah, thanks, this was a lot of fun. For more information on ASCE's interchange program, visit asce.org slash interchange. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange. Okay.